Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Hogarth's Global Astrology. Know your planets, know yourself, or know your nation, know yourself. The two are interchangeable. And welcome to another Hoagie Lee. Let me just straighten up my uh, camera there. Look, I pointed the right direction. So oh, here awesome. Is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we have Dr. Lena Rodriguez with, uh, with us. Now, for her, it's 9 a.m. Sunday morning, folks, because... The clocks have moved forward twice on her. USA clocks and now British clocks. Thank you for this joining us. This is devotion to you guys. <laughs> Lucky it you really can't is. see my jammies from the waist down. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And you will also notice as well that um, Lady G is not able to be with us uh, uh, again this week. She did leave uh, a video on Friday. And she uh, messaged me to say, so she's back home, but the medication side effects and stuff like that. So we may get a third person in for next week. I might have to cast a few emails around just so that Lady G can have a bit of time to recover. Because Lady G, we don't want you feeling pressurized that you want to come back before you can. You know, you've got to have the, yeah. the energy and the strength. And as you know, we go out a fair gallop so we'll see what happens for uh next week what else do i need to tell you before i forget uh oh i'm one way th i'm one third through my glossary in my book in my in my book yes i've people said they wanted wanted a glossary so all the illustrations are done i'm one way th that's one a third. big job the glossary for a book like that is a major job oh my god yeah. I I just realized just how much brain work it is. <laughs> it's just, I'm just like, oh my God, this needs explaining, that needs explaining. So yeah. that, so I'm, I'm pleased with that. I think in the next couple of days it'll be done. There, um, I've got a designer working on the front cover as well. So that's going to come in the next few weeks. So when that's ready, uh, my plan is to publish on April 22nd. Can you believe it, Lena? This is before I knew about all of the craziness coming up wow i feel like i'm just throwing a hand grenade into it all i'm just like you know what while uh, the world is coming off its hinges you know let's all learn yes. about astrology at the same time <laughs> well you explain it so well Hoga. thank you thank you but no this is a real down-to-earth book as well people will yeah. really be able to relate to this and no one's really done an astrology book like this before and i want to say thank you to igor Eagle. Well, the Shakespeare cards. <laughs> the Shakespeare and the Shakespeare. So we'll pull one of those at the end. And yeah, we'll, we'll pull one at the end. Oh, yeah, we'll tell you next week where they can be um, bought. I'm not sure if that's organized yet, but we'll let you know next week. He's an intrepid viewer and watches all our programs. And he spoke to Hogarth and said, could I please use the idea of Shakespeare's insults okay. to create an entire tarot deck? It's incredible. And you don't have to be able to read tarot. You can just have these at a dinner party. Oh yeah, you just it's honestly, it's like it's like it's like cards against humanity, but Shakespeare style. You just <laughs> <laughs> we have to do is just pluck one out. And read, I mean, some devastating ones he's got in there. And also as well, just to give people an update, you know, uh, Lena as well, when I was talking about the energies of the eclipses, plus Uranus and uh, Jupiter coming together and how it can cause political earthquakes, but also real earthquakes and zealotry and stuff like that. With obviously the horrific uh, uh, earthquake in Taiwan, but there was yeah. a shake in New York slash yeah. New Jersey. Did you hear about this? Yes, yes. And somewhere else and somewhere else. I can't remember. There were a few. Yeah. And apparently there's been another um, uh, ship that has crashed into a bridge in Oklahoma. That's what wow. someone else told me as well. And Neptune at the moment is conjunct a certain star which is in the constellation of sidereal Pisces, which is associated with the sea monster. Mm -hmm. And this has been traditionally known for uh, wreckages, uh, shipwrecks, you know, this kind of stuff. So hopefully that energy is uh, gone by the time I'm on a big ship at the end of the year. <laughs> if you don't see me, then, then you'll know why. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, oh, New York was the other place. Yeah, New York. Someone, yes. 
New yeah. York had a mini earthquake. Yeah, yeah. So we see, guys, this is this energy. Everything is building. I think this is why we're feeling so on edge. We've got the actual bona fide lunar eclipse uh, coming in. What? Uh, well, I'm now. Uh, this it's now the seventh of April now because I've now gone over. It's already the seventh April for Lena, so it means the eclipse is tomorrow. Yeah, the one that goes across Texas, uh, you know, later on in American time, obviously. Yeah. Anyway, a lot going on. Are you ready for the yes. first question? Sorry, just one more comment. Whoa. New Madrid earthquake this morning. Where Whoa. is New Madrid? I don't know where New Madrid is. My goodness. Yeah, I know. It's, it's astonishing, isn't it? Because... It's, it, it's sometimes it seems a bit random, doesn't it, Alina, when I make my predictions and stuff and you think, oh, well, that's a, that's a long ways off. And then it all starts to unfold. So this is big energy, guys. Remember, it's yeah. part of the Great Awakening. 2025 is going to be off the charts even more. Just mm -hmm. incredible. OK, so mm -hmm. um, the first question here is uh, you need to find out where New Madrid is as well. But um maybe yeah, i don't know where that, where that is so this is um uk question actually uh for a change now this is coming from sally ann so she says hi hoagie and lovely ladies questions from uk i received a notification in the post of what id was acceptable to vote we've got some may may mayoral elections coming up for london london mayor i think they asked for passport and driver's license but other acceptable id no, uh, but but the other acceptable ID, she says, no other young person would uh, would have and around where I live because most of the youngsters are too poor to afford a driver's license and go on holiday. So they don't have passports. Will these horrid restrictions be lifted once another party is in power? And will these restrictions cause the con merchants to get in again? Uh, and to which I've added the current UK government are a total fraud. <laughs> in my opinion yeah uh, this is really voter cool. id is a thing um in australia we've got a system when anyone turns 18 and many young people don't drive for a lot of reasons like in my day if you were australian you learned to drive in kindergarten you know it was one of those but many don't so you can get your state id you go to the equivalent of the license office get your photo taken because that's what it's about, a photo ID, and just your basic information. You can use that for getting into clubs or voting or anything, and I think it's a good idea. Yeah. You see, you guys are very sensible, you know, the Aussies. When I hear certain policies, I'm oh, like, it's yeah, patchy. It's patchy. Yeah I'm, sure it's, yeah, I'm sure it's patchy. But, you know, one or two things is... Uh, Okay, so we're basically talking about voter suppression in the yeah, UK. Yeah, potentially in the UK. Honestly, guys, I've not even told you all the stuff that's going on here right now because I'm just like, oh, the rest it's... of the world is a bigger drama, but there's a lot of BS going on. Oh. What's this for the UK? What's going well, on with this? ID stuff. And Sandy says in the comments, the epicenter of the New Jersey earthquake might be Trump's golf course. <laughs> oh, you are joking. No, no, I think she's better. But maybe it is. <laughs> I, don't know. I love that. Oh, well, maybe something might be on Earth that, um, you know, he may not, may not want. Um, All right. I can start if you like. You have? Yes, please. Okay, so we're not talking about the national elections. Labor's yeah. going to win those just because there's no one left standing who could possibly support the Tories. That's not the question. Mm -hmm. The question is in relation to the London mayoral elections, but it's raising this issue generally. So I don't think Labor's happy. I don't think young people are happy. Look at these cards. Dreadful, yeah. Um, Hierophant on top of that, no, you cannot vote, you know. Um, and I think there might be a bit of a protest about it or a bit of a ruckus or a Ooh. bit of a something. This is a young person. This used to be my Greta Thunberg card. And I think messaging, as in Twitter that I refuse to call X, 
<laughs> and so I think as it gets closer, there'll be a bit of challenge to this. What did you get? Mm. Uh, was that just the three cards then, or did I did oh. I get that wrong? Oh, four. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, I I picked the five cards as usual. Oh, look, here we go. Two of Swords, yeah. So, of course, this is about choices, making decisions, etc., stuff like that, or maybe not wanting to see something. But it's almost like here, if we take this, were to take this literally, it's almost like they're trying to blindfold the younger electorate. Do you know what I mean? That's how I interpret it. I mean, it's just, yeah, we see this sadly happening all over the world. Uh, I think, obviously, voter suppression is something that's talked more about, isn't it, Lena? We've talked about that in America in, in the sense of gerrymandering and all that kind of stuff. But there's lots of subtle things going on. And obviously, they know what they're doing. They know that very young people, uh, you know, may not have certain forms of ID uh, in place and stuff like that. And it's just it's just to put people off, really. It's just of to course put people it off. is. Really, that's what it is. You know, they're trying to cause a kind of like not sure where which way to turn energy in the actual voter. We look here. There's an element of wheel of fortune here. Mm -hmm. So there's an element here of something kind of unpredictable or, you know, could it be that, you know, in future elections, they're trying to spin the wheel their way, you know, as it as as it were. Either way, it's a bit. It's, it's a little bit suspicious uh, in terms of UK election because you've never you've never needed that before. You've needed proof of address mm. and then you show up and then then you vote. But uh, mm, mm, mm. We, if we if we look here, we have the five of cups. So, yeah, there is an element here of disappointment, disillusion. Uh, so this can represent maybe like the younger voters or I just think this might be representing the voters in general after you know what is it 13 slash 14 years of tory absolute rubbish i mean the damage that they've done but i also as well i feel like this is actually the tories to be honest who just mm. they've run out they've run out of ideas i mean they're not yeah. even trying to pretend anymore guys they no. they know they've run out of road they're like okay which which block do you want us to put our heads on now <laughs> because yeah, it is. that's right <laughs> Because it's kind of over, you know. So I think this yeah. is not only the electorate. I think this is also the Tories, by extension, Rishi, Rishi Sunak. They know that it's, you know, the party is pretty much dead. <laughs> <laughs> they know they are, it, it, unless there is an absolute miracle, they, they're like this tomb. That this is showing the Tory party. I think just with everyone, everyone except the most craziest of people, but there's not even many of them left. People mm -hmm. are really, really fed up with the Tories. Yes. So they're going to put them to bed quite literally. The outcome card, though, is one of satisfaction. Um, I doubt it. I doubt if it's that for the Tories. It literally would take a miracle. Maybe it could. The satisfaction could be in the in seeing them put to bed. Yes, I think, it could be. I think it's as literal as that. I think people are going to be like, "Good riddance." Yeah. So this voting ID thing, but reading for the Tories, I I don't think it's looking good for them. Anything no. you want to add to that, Nina? No, but there's a comment here I'd like to share. Sure. Intrepid viewer, I love your name for obvious reasons, and she says, without immigrant labour, the US and the UK cannot sustain their economy. Same in Australia. I don't understand the vilification of immigrants. Okay, so you've got your questions for this week, but I'm going to write it down and I'm going to put it on my next video because I think this is a perennial story. Mm. Yeah. yeah yes very interesting and we've got a comment here thank you kathleen and she's got a message here which i think is really right let's all pray for the most benevolent outcome for our community and all sentient beings worldwide blessings for all yes i agree that this is the great awakening it really is uh these these next 18 months we're going to yeah. learn a lot of stuff folks 
And um, but I also hope it hope it wakes a lot of people up as well, because I've been sitting on my hands for years now. And there's lots that I've been wanting to talk about that I've had to be like that. But soon um, it will all be out there. Uh, here we are. We've got Mara. Pat, thank you so much for your donation. And we've got some extra information here from Julianne Jones. So she said the earthquake in New Jersey started in northern New Jersey, went up to Connecticut and maybe further and went to Delaware and perhaps further south. It nearly shook me out of bed. Wow. Central New Jersey, Princeton. Thanks for sharing that, Julianne. Wow. My we goodness. had an earthquake here in Melbourne last year and I missed it because I thought it was the Labrador jumping on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you missed it because you were dancing at some psychedelic rave. You know, you were just like, whoa, that track was good. <laughs> yeah, these things. So we'll have to watch out, folks. We're kind of the whole world really is on earthquake alert right now. It's with these shaking. The energy is shaking. Literally, yeah. Literally shaking. Um, are you ready for the next question? Yeah. All right, so here we are. This is an eclipse one, actually. So this dovetails in quite nicely. So Lily White Owl says, in what ways will our lives change with this eclipse, both, both individually and collectively, and for how long? I'll answer the how long bit after mm. we've pulled the cards. Mm because I don't want to influence Lena's perceptions at all. I just want to mm. pure read. Yeah. Let's, let's have a look. Time change. How will we be affected? Look at Oh, very interesting. Hmm. What do you have, Lena? Oh. oh, it's like a crystal ball in a way. So here we have the Empress who magnifies things, right? That's her role on the one hand she's nurturing but everything is magnified under her watch now we will be <clears throat> feeling heartache and pain because there are many reasons for it um to cause us heartache and pain the frustration on a political level, but the frustration, we've done nothing about climate change in the last 40 years. So we're talking big, medium, small frustrations and heartaches. But the Empress is twinned with this wonderful energy of the Queen of Cups here. So I think it'll be, it's a sort of overused phrase, but the awakening of the divine feminine in the sense, so along with this, the devil, okay. Yeah. So the devil, which represents just low vibration behavior, people behaving meanly, um, the uber wealthy being happy to crush workers in their wake and just remember everything that the devil represents in the modern world, people's dependence on substances that aren't, in their best interests, etc. No matter where you look, this is a big. Every all of these cards are going big for me in this spread. So it's the big injustices of the world, and people are confused, very confused, because there's good things and bad things in this cups, and so there's bits of positive and bits of negative, and what is happening? Can I do anything? It's just me, you know. And the message of it, this, I think, is despite the pressures and the heartaches and the frustrations, channel your own, and this is for men too, men who are sentient and understand how the world works. It's really important to have a foot <clears throat> on land in the real world and a foot in the higher realms of the mystical and wonderful. It's really, really important in this period of time to understand this 
And the way forward is to work together. Mm. So it was quite an intense reading, really. Yeah, yeah. And just to add a bit more on that in terms of the earthquake in New Jersey. So uh, Sandy says, no, not a joke. It was at Trump at Trump's golf course. Oh, really? And then, uh, then uh, Dragon Rise says the epicenter was two miles from Bedminster. In Intrepid viewer said it was 15 minutes from epicenter, I think. And then someone says it was 15, mi 15 miles from it, I think. But either way, it was yeah, pretty close. It was close. So, um, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a certain someone, a, a certain relative of his literally got shaken in the ground, bless her. You know, wow. My God, you can't make this stuff up. So just we'll just have to see what happens um everywhere else as well guys so there will be lots of tremors tremors more tremors all over the world i think in this time window um so uh so the eclipse and then i'll tell you how long it will potentially last afterwards so here mm. i get the five of swords i mean <sighs> Doesn't it just, doesn't the whole world just feel like this right now? Like the Five of Swords, yeah. battles, conflicts, grotesque things happening to the extent that people feel they want to, you know, walk away. I mean, it's, it's just never ending, you know, terrorist attacks, this, that, and the other. If we look here, the next card, you know, as you know, I call this card Stinky Fish. So this could be uh, unpleasant revelations come out. We see there's lots of stuff going on with P. Diddy and things going on in Hollywood and this, that and the other. Let's not forget eclipses in general is when the light is obscured and things come out of the dark. That's the general gist. <laughs> When it's the lunar eclipse that deals with the public, the masses on a whole, and uh, Lena, of course, all of us saw, you know, the whole Cape phenomena, if you think that was all that lunar eclipse energy, which mm. literally took over, you know, the whole world. And there's still some mystery there, we could say to a certain extent, but that can typify the lunar eclipse. Solar eclipses tend to be more about leaders or public figures, um, you know, kind of like, you know, presidents, bosses, this kind of stuff, people that are normally put up on quite a high pedestal. So there could be some rude awakenings here in regards to leadership. Uh, if we look here, though, I think uh, I think there are actually going to be some people who are going to be inspired by this eclipse. I think it's going to be one of the most watched eclipses in America from what yeah, I understand. Yeah, the, the event itself is attracting millions it's like mahusive. I think um, didn't Niagara Falls, the Niagara on the Canadian side, they declared an emergency, not as in because they were worried the sky was going to fall down, but because over a million people are going to visit to see the eclipse on that side. Millions of, you know, people can't get hotels and stuff like that. So there are a lot of people that are very enthusiastic, shall mm. we say, about, about this eclipse. Uh, they're pumped and energised. Uh, I'll give my thoughts in a minute of, of what it could mean. What is interesting here, though, I've got the Six of Swords, but reversed. I've got reversal turn up again. Do you remember I said I straightened out all the cards? Yeah. So what this says to me is we're going to have to revisit stuff. This card, yeah, because yeah, this card is normally about what? Sailing to smoother waters, etc. Moving on, leaving things behind. Eh, it's turned up reversed. This eclipse, we're going to have to revisit themes of the past. Things that we thought were done and dusted are going to have to be looked at again. I'm feeling like we're almost going to have like hostage syndrome as well. Like, like we're stuck in Groundhog Day. It's going to bring up, it's going to bring up things to do with, with the past or the more recent past with that card like that. What's also interesting, though, is I think people are going to be uh, speaking up as well. We're going to have more voices come out. Here are the pages. Pages are always dealing with messages. And if you think about it, look, we've got the page of wands and the page of cups. So this is also talking about uh, youth as well. But I think the young people are going to have a lot to say. There uh, Maybe could there be some protests and stuff like that? Um, we'll have to see. But... I'm seeing this as spirited, passionate and feisty messages with some surprises and having to revisit things that we thought were done and dusted, 
but people are very enthusiastic as well about the eclipse. Anything to add to that, Lena, before I say how long it could last? The effect? Yeah, well, it is fascinating. And a viewer just said, I've seen various eclipses in my lifetime, but haven't seen the intensity of people wanting to witness it. And I think it's only last, what, four minutes or something. Um, so I find it fascinating on an esoteric level that people are subconsciously drawn to it for reasons they probably aren't aware of or don't understand. It's like, oh, it's on, let's go, you know. But it's a chance, I think, for the yeah. cosmos to give a real boom. I think so. I think this has to be one of the most watched. I really do think it's it's up there. We're going to have multiple, multiple millions of people watching live. What uh, the viewers may not know is, is that the ancients said for ha for every minute the, uh, uh, the eclipse of totality lasts is equivalent to one year of influence. Oh, yes. fascinating. Yeah. And it would make sense. So this eclipse, that at its maximum totality is supposed to be four and a half minutes. So that means this eclipse is going to last for four and a half years of influence, which in a way makes sense, doesn't it? It's epic. Yeah. And in the collective, I think everyone knows that this is a big deal. It, like you said, even people that aren't that into this stuff are just like, woof. Yeah. Yes. yes. So we'll have to see. Are you ready for the next question? Yes. Brilliant. And I should also say as well, we've got some, uh, we've got a Biden question coming up and we've got a Duck Lorange question coming up as well towards the end. All right. So question number three. So this is coming from Ella Zoy. Yeah, Ella Zoy. Hi, Ergarth and ladies. With the recent attack uh, by Israel on the Iranian embassy, really? I, did, I didn't even know about this. Yes. Uh, yeah. Wow. Can you read on what may follow as iran said it will retaliate thank you also nicola asked on my thursday friday but i didn't have time to get around to it um she basically said where's the effect they've been quiet uh, a bit has iran overstretched itself um and you know they've not retaliated yet and i'll give my thoughts on the end so let's read on that what's going on with iran and will they retaliate What's going on with Iran? Bush. God, what times we live in. Yes. What times. Yeah. Let's Going on with Iran. No. Yes. What's going to happen with Iran? Oh, this is interesting. Yes. And we have 1,300 of you so far in the house. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Big love. Mwah! And mm. happy Sunday as well to anyone uh, catching us on oh. Sunday. Many of you watch us on Sunday with a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, that's what I need. Oh, I've yeah. already had one, but it just occurred to me I need a second <laughs> cup of coffee. Um, yeah. Here we go with Iran. Now, the whole country is shrouded in secrecy with this moon mm. too. Because here's the problem, the emperor, meaning I think collectively the Ayatollahs, the repression in Iran. I understand the questions about what Iran is doing out there, but the card sort of went to what is happening in Iran. We all remember those very brave women protesting, you know, last year and stuff yes. against the morality police, right, and the repression of the emperor. People are not happy. They are not interested. Iranian people are not interested in being this hub of terrorism, I think. And you've got the, the ancient Ayatollahs 
holding on to their power as leaders always do, let's have another war, keep me in power. And I think people are really, really over it. A compromise will have to be reached on some level. But before that happens, um, before that happens, I think we have the chariot here. So this would be, I think, splinter groups that are funded by Iran. So there are mm. the risks of reprisals with this chariot, I think. But it's important to acknowledge this isn't what Iranian people are going to bed at night thinking, gee, I hope we cause another nightmare somewhere. You know what I mean? So it's almost out of control in terms of the inevitable response but hopefully it's not going to be as major as anything like October 7 or anything as horrendous as that. Mm. So I think Iran, my point is, barble, barble, Iran needs to get its own house in order and it needs a regime change and let's hope a solar eclipse does it. Because I remember mm. in 1979, Iranian friends of mine were wearing mini skirts and boob tubes and hanging out with us and stuff. And they were horrified when they got the news of the Ayatollah's takeover because women were highly educated. Da, 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 yeah. And it went back to the Middle Ages, which is what the American right seems to think is a good place to be. Oh, yeah. I mean, so, they want a, yeah, Christian caliphate. That's really what they want. Yeah, yes, wow. and this oh. lot want an Islamic caliphate. So let's get rid of the caliphate, shall we, you know, world, including the fundamentalists mm. everywhere. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Yes. So well, the, indeed. The instinct I get with my cards is that, you know, Iran is playing this one more cautiously, more cautiously. Why do I say that? I get the two of cups, which is all about what relationships, partnership, marriage, stuff like that. So the sense I get is, is that Iran could be talking with its with its closest partners as to what to potentially do. Mm. And in a way, this in a way, this kind of might be even a bit more kind of dangerous than just the, an immediate retaliation here, because mm. this shows negotiations, talking, stuff like that. I've also got a little theory as to why that might be, but I'll, I'll save it until I finish re re reading the card. So here, the teamwork, planning, negotiation, partnership with someone or something in regard to uh, this retaliation. Yeah, so it's not a knee-jerk response. This was such a more planned response. You know, you know the Iranians. You know, you know that. They're, you know, they're intelligent people, you know, obviously it's not the people, but do you know what I mean? Mm. Culturally, you know, there's a bit, there's a bit more going on there than most more people realize in the obstacle position. We've got the uh, ace of cups. So, you know, normally this would be a, a, a you know, a, a beneficent uh, card, you know, showing, you know, happiness, fulfillment, but it's turning up in the obstacle position. So quite obviously, you know, they're not happy about, you know, what's happened. And it's just it's just the general kind of just horribleness of what's going on in the Middle East and the rest of the world. Mm. We look here, though. This is interesting. The justice mm. comes up in the middle. Mm. And it, could it be? Oh, do you know what? Mm. Could it be instead of an obvious physical retaliation? Mm. Could it be that Iran petitions mm. um, for um, the war crimes thing against Israel? Because, you know, you know, South Africa, what is it? South Africa, Ireland and a few other places have um, basically they want to um, they want to basically charge uh, Israel with war crimes. Everyone knows this is, you know, it's not that controversial to say. But the fact that it's turned up here and there's a partnership card here, mm. maybe it maybe. Iran may strike that way via mm. some kind of court or legal process. So that Possibly. snaps in my mind, yeah, where they might actually put, you know, their their weight, their heft behind that as, as their form of retaliation. 
that's how I'm seeing that. Particularly when we look at the next card here, which is the Ten of Pentacles, which deals with institutions, governments, stuff like that, big money. So this says to me, it could be that the Iranian government, I think they're going to retaliate via, via some international kind of court. And it looks like they're prepared to do the work uh, as well, mm -hmm. even though it's going to be a hard slog, a hard job. Everything in the Middle East right now is is very very difficult. But this says to me as well because it's two it, it and it's two tens together, mm. and you know so and it's yeah. When I look at that, I think they're going to use legal methods, guys. They might use an international some kind of international court to kind of hold Israel account that way, rather than doing a physical attack, which would of course just escalate things further and they might lose a bit of moral high ground also as well remember as well those five heifers that i was telling you about actually it's only four now because one was disqualified uh, but that's probably all going to happen soon as well so i think iran is playing a longer game not wanting to feed into the what is it the apocalyptic and what is it the battle of agog and agom or something i can't remember from the bible your thoughts, Lena? Yes, well, Iran is acting as a proxy to fund Hamas and Hezbollah. And so it's um, got to expect more things because of that too. Like Israel could well attack them again with one of those precision things. Mm. So um, we'll see what happens. We'll see, but I think I think it's 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 going to be it's going to be non-linear. It's not yeah. going to be in an obvious way. I think they're going to they're going to be yeah. quite clever, quite clever with it. I think. Yes. And let's see here as well. I want to say thank you to Kathleen. Oh, has it shown? A minute. What's going on here? Oh, we just had a donation coming, but I can't get it to show up on the screen. Let me go here one second. Let me scroll down. Maybe this will work. Ah, here we are. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for your awesome. uh, donation. Thank and you. To donated. There were several donations. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you to Tribal Woman. And thank you as well, Mark McKenzie, for your uh, for your donation as well. Oh, yes. All right. Are we ready for the next question? And then we're going to get on to a bit of time. There's and a, a bit tip here wrong. in the comments from oh. Chuck Hepner. Arc welders helmets, the helmets that welders use, um, are very efficacious for watching a solar eclipse, higher shade numbers and stuff. So thanks for that tip. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> if you happen to have one lying around, of course, you know, I'm sure it was sure, you know, I'm sure that would come in handy. But yes, that that, yeah. that is true. Never get rid of your old welding helmet. No. <laughs> well, this question's come in from Nicola, Nicola McLafferty. And now we're getting so we're getting in our esoteric aeroplane and we're flying to Mexico. Now, this is interesting. Have you heard about this, Lena? So Nicola says Me Mexico cuts diplomatic ties with Ecuador after George Glass arrest uh, ex-vice president was forcibly removed there are rising tension uh, tensions as a result do the cards indicate this uh, ex escalating and I was just saying yeah, and Pluto in Capricorn governments yeah governments all around the world have you heard about this story Lena because you're quite no, good in I South haven't. America. so all right, we'll let's see, see. Mexico, Ecuador. Mexico cuts Mexico and Ecuador. Mm, interesting one. And the last thing we want to see is South America divided. It's already tough as it is already. Well, Malay in Argentina is already doing his best to. <laughs> wreck the the bond between latin american countries and he's accused brazil of being communist you know under oh. lula and, and you know rubbish oh, just oh oh um, any, any news? yeah go on 
Sorry. Darren was saying 50% of female university, 50% of students in Iran are female, and there's a surprising number of female film directors, architects, lawyers, and doctors in Iran. And that was the point I was trying to make. These women are sick of it. So, Mexico, what's happening here? Look, speaking of stinky fish, because for me sometimes it's stinky fish, sometimes it's quite benign, but this is a stinky yeah. fish moment. I think that would, and it's about messaging, so I think there's going to be nasty messages and nasty interactions there's going to be something, um, or this could be a physical military action, but I don't mm. think so. And I think it's more amping up. It's going to start verbal, amping up to the attack. But then, now this could be a bit naive on my part, the nostalgia of the connection, I think both sides really realising, is this our biggest problem? But the problem is who replaces the Ecuadorian one. So it's still important, but I think it will dial back with Mexico and then the issue will become more within Ecuador mm. and there might be a challenge to what has happened there, a legal challenge. Mm. So I think it's not going to be so international ongoingly but more within equitable right yeah i've got some interesting cards here uh, especially the last card as well i think kind of echoes things that you were saying so straight away i think look here here's here's mexico because obviously they've they've thrown out you know the the the, the whatever so they're taking power taking power into their own hands and asserting their authority yeah asserting their authority and and you know talking about this, talking about this and sharing it, of course, you know, with the world and what have you. So there is an element here of, of someone, you know, stepping into their power and, you know, using their force of will. There is a do domestic agenda as well uh, at home. So I think, you know, obviously the queen of the queen of pentacles here does do, it is sort of like uh, a more kind of domestic car looking after the money security stability and stuff like that so I, this also as well gives me these echoes of that it's not gonna spread like internationally if it was like the tower and the world yeah. card do you know what i mean then it would suggest escalation this i don't want it to, to seem try it but this is almost almost like it's like a bit of a domestic situation yes. do you know what i mean because this literally is the card of domesticity home and stuff like that so i don't see it going that far but it's a queen of pentacles and i've got more pentacles that show up as well look at this ace of pentacles mm. could someone get paid off or could this be settled with a bit of a with a financial transaction perhaps maybe is this to do with trade in some way as well between the two countries? It seems like there might be a more of a financial element here. I don't know enough about the story because it's a total cold read for me. But this suggests here that there could be either money changing hands or there's something economic here or money to be gained or maybe even fool's gold in some sense. But there's something financial going on, particularly when we look at the next card. Oh, which yeah. is the seven of pentacles which i call the card of roi which means return on your investment so i think both countries might be looking at this and asking themselves mm, is it worth escalating this yeah yes. they're pondering it like you know sorry lena are you gonna say um i heard that the mexican embassy was raided or something, which is a big no-no anywhere so they'll be offended. But I don't think it's going to lead to a matter. It's oh. bad manners. <laughs> yeah, so there's something there's some something financial going on here. I can't quite figure out what it is. But then the outcome card, look at that, which mm. is, you know, marriage, discussion, partnership, persuasion, and stuff like that. So will it escalate to something bigger? The cards don't suggest that because this is a card of coming together in negotiation. So I think they need to negotiate uh, on this. 
and that both countries may decide it's, it's in their best interest not to take it further. But why Ecuador raided the Mexican embassy is, oh, gosh, I mean, I mean, that's that's a bit, you know, someone's playing agent provocateur here. Yeah. Someone's playing a power game. You know, the, the magician card showing up here. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see how it plays out. But I don't see it becoming a big international thing. It's more domestic, and hopefully they can uh, resolve it. Anything mm. to add to that, Lena? No, no. All right, so we've got that. All right. Now we need to talk about Duck LaRange. Oh, no, wait, yeah. no. We're going to do Biden and then Duck LaRange. Okay. Because uh, uh, here we are. I've, I've got to make sure I had it numbered. So this is coming from Thursday Fry Up, actually, but I thought well worth asking. Oh, and we've just reached... 1500 of you thank you guys so that much so cool. much appreciated Mwah! big love all right so um here so this is in from a nicola but on thursday thursday for thursday thrive but i didn't have time biden and g have had a phone discussion this week do the cards show if there was major progress or just a charade on the part of china let's have a look so Biden G phone call. Yeah, Biden G phone call. I would say, irrespective of the rivalry, it's in America's best interest to keep China sweet and vice versa. Oh, yes. They don't want to directly conflict with each other. Both of their economies are so intertwined. Oh. Yes. She and Biden. She and Biden. She and Biden. And we'll read on Duck LaRange. Oh. She and Biden. She and Biden. She and Biden. Is the she and Biden. She and Biden. Okay, I can go if you like, Hogar. Go for it, Lena. All right. I decided to pull three, one world tarot and two from my little Italian deck. Now, the first ones I get, here's the stinky fish again. Oh, you are joking. Really? Wow. So weird. Because I was shuffling the whole time you were talking. So it's meant mm -hmm. to come up. And in this case, I would describe it as nonsense talk in a way. Uh, I think here we go. Because the next card, five of wands, round and round. You know how they say with couples that are fighting, they don't fight all the time. They have the same argument over and over. <laughs> right? You know. And it's like that. You know, we've been here before. Let's have the same conversation we've had for 45 years. Awesome, right? And why are they doing that? They're both trapped and neither can admit it to their own populations that, like you said it, the economies are so massively entwined. Everyone pretends that's not the case. It so is the case. Really is the case. And China can't admit it to its population. Biden can't admit it to Americans. So let's just stay there talking in circles. And the clarifiers, um, which I didn't really need, but the White House turned up in the form of the Casa Rosa. And the relationship's not well. <laughs> you know, someone's in bed. But it's not fatal. It's not hot, heavy drama, drama at all. It's just poorly. You know what I mean? Like it, it's anemic. The relationship doesn't get fed yeah. properly. And one of the reasons in Australia is we don't have Mandarin or Cantonese speakers in enough numbers at all to be dealing with China. We, we just, they are our major trading partner and they're the biggest power in our region. But because we're an Anglophone country, we've got no idea what China's really thinking and doing. 
And I think mm. it's exactly the same for the US. Wow. Wow. Very interesting. Yeah, my cards are a little bit more dramatic, though, as, as okay. they go through. And I just want to say thank you to Mariana Colton. Thank you so much for your donation. Much appreciated. Um, so, so here we go. Right. This is the legalese, the posturing. I think this is the, the first card out, King of Swords. I think this is how they're approaching each other. Yeah. I've got my sword up. We're, you know, you know, they have to. Like, like you said, this is much more about projecting strength to their own populations. Xi has to look strong on the international stage. So, of course, does does President Biden and any any leader. Look, we've got the kings here. So this is talking about both men. Yeah. Their stance, both wanting to look calm, cool, collected, rational, sane, you know, all of that kind of stuff. That's the presentation. Inwardly, though, in the obstacle position, neither is lacking the options on the table. <laughs> because it's just like it's kind of like Lena said it's like it just it's like circuitous it just goes round and round it's almost like oh you know the four of cups can be very much like oh god here we go again. Again. Mm -hmm. here we go again it's like yawn oh yeah it's oh, it can sometimes it can deal with a, a kind of slight boredom even yeah but there's something floating in 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 the cup in in the in the cloud that maybe both countries are missing what we can see but maybe they can't uh, I got the same card, of course, as Lena. So, of course, spirit is totally unified. I say, look, they're both in bondage yes. to each other. Yes. It, it, think about it. Like America and China are the two big superpowers on planet Earth. Rivals, huge economies, both two huge polluters as well. Uh, uh, yeah, they must yeah mega, mega. And they're trying to compete with each other, but it, it, they're so in, intertwined because if China makes a move to kind of amputate its relationships uh, with America, then it's sure, sure, assured destruction because they were so heavy handed, of course, over the whole um, COVID uh, scenario where they virtually tanked their own, own, own economy. Mm -hmm. But likewise as well, um, you know, everyone loves cheap goods. What 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 would happen if suddenly all the production from China stopped? We actually had a test of that, didn't we? We had a taste of it over, mm. you know, over what happened. So the idea that America is also will also turn its back completely on China as well, it's just not going to happen either. Mm. So these are two interdependent um, uh, economies as well as the international economy mixed in there, but they're kind of bound to each other. They're like, they're like hostages to each other in a way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They not liking each other, but Oh God, we, we, we have the same bonds, but don't let anyone know because this is a little bit embarrassing. Yeah. However, the <laughs> next two cards are a little bit shocking. We have the tower card show up. Mm. Yeah. So now the tower card doesn't always necessarily mean a disaster, but it certainly means a change. Yeah, it can yes. be an unexpected change. So there could be a shift in either economies. Yes, yeah? something may shift the stalemate, but we're not sure mm. yet. And then the outcome card is the death card. Mm. Oh, now mm -hmm. does it mean that, you know, mutual assured destruction? No, not necessarily. It means the relationship has to transform and change. Yeah. Something has to go from this kind yes. of like meh, and it all being entangled up. And it may be something shocking or surprising, but it, it the tr the relationship basically needs to transform and change. So I think it's just like Lena said, drop the card. Uh they're speaking in circles, mm. wants to move on, but they, they can't quite. So something big has to shift. Someone yeah. or something has to give. Mm. Anything to add to that, Lena? Um, Igor in the comments, Igor, who made these cards. Thank you, Igor. He said we, our prime minister from back in 2007 on was Kevin Rudd, who was I think Igor, correct me, but I think he was a Cantonese speaker. So he was our only Anglo Prime Minister to ever be able to conduct his own negotiations in China. Thank you, Kevin. He's now ambassador to the US. And Trump said, oh, stupid guy. He's just so stupid. Oh. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so not. 
regardless of what you think of Kevin Rudd, one thing he's not is stupid. Wow. Very smart guy. Yeah, you'd have to be, especially to learn languages like that, Cantonese, Japanese, um, you know, and, uh, you know, um, oh, Mandarins, all that stuff. Um, Kathleen is asking, are the Tories equivalent to the uh, USA GOP? Yes, pretty much. Yeah, not, not, yeah broadly. Not quite as yeah. batshit as them, but still not, not that far off. That's but that's yeah, not far off. Broadly, broadly. <laughs> All right, Lena. <clears throat> so it's, it's we've got Duck Larange, huh? Duck Larange. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> AKA also known as the Yeti, AKA Donald Trump. So this is coming from Sharon Donnelly, and she asks, "Hi, Hogarth and Lena. Trump needs money. Will he sell documents at the uh, Live Golf Tournament? Thanks in advance." And my immediate response was like, "Well, what hasn't he sold yet?" But That's you know true. what? <laughs> Let's just have a read on his energy and maybe pull a Shakespeare card to see what Shakespeare thinks uh, in regards to Igor's deck. Yeah. Oh, energy of Trump. So what's our actual question? So it, the question is, is like that basically she's saying, is he going to sell any more documents at the Live Golf Tournament? I think most of those documents have already been sold, but let's just yeah. say, is he going to use any more leverage, as it were, yeah, at the tournament? Like if I become, if you make me president, then I would do X, Y, Z. He's always doing favors. Oh yeah. My gosh. Yeah. So let's see. What's the energy of Trump? What's his intentions for the live tournament? And then we'll see what Shakespeare thinks via Igor's deck. Ah, oh, Duck Larange. <laughs> I mean, it's almost farcical, isn't it? I mean, it's so terrible, oh. but at the same time, it's just. It's just an absolute. The US madness. needs its own version of spitting image. I don't yeah, think there's an does. equivalent. It really um, does. For those who aren't familiar in the UK, uh, this group of very talented people. If you imagine the Simpsons or something as puppets, um, so they're very clever, very lifelike looking puppets, and they do this political dialogue. But of course, because they're puppets, they can actually say, what they want to say, you know, as artists. And it's hilarious. Oh, it's brilliant. Love spitting image. What do you have, Lena? My cards are pretty clear. Well, it's talk about willing and dealing. Okay, here's the thing. Never miss an opportunity here. Which way to go? Where do you point him next? Wind him up? Send him off? It's... <laughs> It happens to be this event. He's going to talk up large, you know, I'm going to win, guys. Are you going to be on the winning train? You know, like stick with me. He's going to be talking all that. People won't be hearing it exactly the same way. <laughs> it's a total nightmare. There'd be people going, how can I get out of this event? Okay, yeah. seriously. Um. I think there will be some minor pledges. Now, this is a big money card, but next to the other cards that are coming up, including the death card, it's wow. like I think they're going to play his game. They're going to go, yeah, Donald, um, where do I sign? I'm going to pledge something and then sort of rub their signature out with their finger or something like that or leave <laughs> off the zeros i pledge six dollars to this campaign i just get this strong feeling rather than saying no to him it's easier to say yes and then just fudge it i will I'm, yeah. I'm telling you there's going to be fudging and then the death card this might mean it's the end of his golfing career <laughs> who knows what's it? but it's the end of something and i think it's the end of the magic you know, in yeah. that sense, I think he simply doesn't have the pulling power anymore, notwithstanding the cult, the immediate diehard yeah. absolute cult. Yeah, you're right. Like you say, that you call him like the rusted on, the rusted on, the, the barnacles, as, it, as yeah. it were, will 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 be there. But I think just internationally, yes, he has lost a lot of his luster uh because it, it's just it's just unseemly isn't it just to be 
and the ways had to scrabble around for money quite quite nakedly you know there is yeah. that little bit of like oof oof you know mm. even in even among these elites uh, as it were there there's so many of them are corrupt but it's when it's when the it's when the laundry is so and you know the it's like the underwear with the you know the marks in the underpants you know just yeah. out there on the washing line it's just a bit you know a bit unseemly Too much. So Duck Larange, here we are at this golf tournament. He's going to be hustling like a dervish, yeah. of course, yeah. strumming up whatever support he can. But, you know, there's no consensus. There's no agreement. And it's, it's just a bit wild. Everyone's swinging their clubs in different directions. And like, yeah, Donald, all right, we'll help you. But, you know, they're probably thinking about their own elections. Remember, 49% of the total world's population is voting this year. Oh. Here is Dr. Larange himself, of course, looking out internationally, waiting to see what ships uh, would come in. He's obviously relied on Victor Orban to help him out a little bit for entertainment purposes only, okay. but that was the purpose of, of the travel. And he's seeing, he's eyeing up international waters, folks. Who else can I pump? Yes, to help me. But this is turning up in the obstacle positions. So it could mean the ship maybe doesn't come in. However, Dr. Larange is undeterred. Here he is here. Now, normally we've got the Nine of Pentacles, which is normally quite a benefic beneficent, uh, bene benefic card. But the shadow of this card, particularly when you're talking about Duck Larange, is prostitution. Yeah. So here he is. Look, I'm for sale. I'm for sale. You know, I mean, what is he going to sell next? What is it? We've had what? Golden boots. We've had I I NFTs. We've had Bibles. I mean, he, obviously he's going to be, I don't know, what's he going to be selling? Fruit and veg next? You know, I I, it's just He's like, already tried it. I mean, failed projects surround him, you know, Trump steaks, Trump water, Trump yeah. everything. Gone, it's just, gone. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. So here he is basically touting himself to the highest bidder as usual. Um, but I don't think many fish are biting. Look, he's worried. Yeah. The the allure, yeah. kind of like Lena said, it's just rubbing off. He's not, I don't think he's seen as the same catch that he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People may be getting a bit bored, but here he is trying to persevere, you know, trying to navigate through the choppy waters. I mean, if there's one thing with Duck Larange, I mean, he certainly doesn't give up. So you can see here, this is the persistent person, but there is worry there. And I think his international cachet is is falling and you know we'll have to see what happens with those shares i think they might have they bounced back up yet lena or are they still no, there'll be no bounce. I don't think. yeah yeah I mean, there so might be a hiccup but it's on its way down i think it could yeah. set a new record for going through the floor you know in the next really? six months because it's not based on anything yeah it's their I monopoly shares yeah, the company I lost fifty-eight million last year. Yeah, how can it be valued in the billions? Because they start to say, "Oh, it is Truth Social is billion." And like, how no, is it billions? It made its revenue income last year was four million. Yeah, <laughs> and its loss was fifty-eight million. And yet, it's valued is, at billions. This is just that's just absurd. Yeah, but only for you know a matter of weeks because it was falsely inflated. That's what happens on the stock market. Falsely inflated by the MAGA files rushing in, you know, thinking they were going to be able to touch the magic, you know. Wow. No, no. I think it is the... the that is that is definitely fading. He doesn't have the same shine. Never count him out, though. Like I said, never count him out because last time he was underestimated and look what happened. So keep keep the eyes peeled. Shall we yes. pull on? That? Shall we pull a Shakespeare yes. from Igor's deck to close, and then we will call it a day there. So let's That's see. Laurent. Yes. Yeah. What does I, I'm I'm going to close my eyes here and I, I'm going to pick and you tell me where to stop, Lena. Okay, stop. All right, let's see. let's see. What does the bard have to say about what's yeah. going on here? All right, here we are. Oh, this is very short. Ten of Cups, it says, there's two of you, the devil make a third. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a Gemini. I love that. <laughs> oh, Igor, you must be happy. And I got the Page of Wands. 
The motions of his spirit are dull as night and his affections dark as Erebus. Let no such man be trusted. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And that's what the cards look like. They're very gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it sums him up, really, doesn't it? It just, yeah. just sums him up. Sums him up. It really does. And why these people are throwing their money at him, well, we know why, because they, they want this, you know, neo-fascist Christian caliphate. That's what they want. Yeah. They're totally yeah. bonkers. But yeah. why anyone would want that is is just, is just beyond me. I don't me. understand but, it. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't On it? On any Lena? level, really, I don't. Why would you yeah. want to go back 200 years? You know? Yeah, crazy. Yeah. And thank you so much for your uh, uh, donation. Thanks, uh, really, thank you, yes. Right. Can you believe it? the time has gone, Lena? Once again, <laughs> it's gone in the flash. So you, you need some coffee and you need to top up. A happy Sunday. I don't to know everybody. whether to have coffee or go back to bed. <laughs> I know it's still that early. It's still that early, and uh, but uh, we'll see. But many of you will be joining us uh, with a coffee on Sunday, so we really do appreciate that as well. We're going to see. Maybe we might have a third person for next week. We're going to see how uh, Lady G does. Uh, of course, we have a we have a name in mind, but I need to send them an email. I don't want to announce before I've actually approached approached the person. And we hope that uh, Lady G obviously has a speedy recovery. But you will be seeing us. Next week, fabulous readings, of course, as always, Lena. Always a pleasure to work with you. And we'll see you next week, folks. Totally. See you guys. Bye-bye.